question from driving sort of stuff. I've done a little bit of sim work in, in the formula and I found it really quite not, well, yeah, actually difficult to go from listening to your beeps and, and being very smooth and looking after the power train and, and all the electricity whilst doing a good lap time to then suddenly saying, okay, you've got full power in one lap, put it together. How did you find that? Obviously, you, I, I presume you haven't tested on a full street circuit. It will be a, a test track, so you don't have the walls and whatnot. So maybe I can ask the question to both Sheldon and Jake. How is that as a reference point thing? Because for the, for the listeners, you'll actually be going the opposite of what you usually do in qualifying. So usually you'll be breaking a bit later in qualifying. Yeah. And actually you're going to have to break a bit earlier because you're arriving so much faster with all the power. So how, how do you yeah, compartmentalize all that in your head? <laughs> yeah, that's actually one of my best explanations of Formula E kilowatt runs is that there's no fuel load or anything. So the car doesn't get any lighter in qualifying. It's pretty much just more power. So you've got to break earlier, like you said. Um, and the thing about Formula E weekends is you fly all the way across the world. You go to Hong Kong, you go to Diria, for example. You only have one shot of it or two shots in qualifying, obviously, um, in the group stages where if you if you don't get that one lap together, you lock up in turn one or, you know, you, you touch the wall or something. Your, your weekend's pretty much over because let's be honest, if you start at the back, you, you have no chance. So um, in a sense, it's, it's very knife edge, the car to drive. It, it locks the front extremely easily. Um, and it, everything's just very sensitive. But what I like about formula is that you can really feel everything. So because you're in a cockpit that doesn't really have a lot of damping and stuff, you feel everything through your ass. And that's what you don't have. That's a sen sensation you don't have in GT3 cars um, is really feeling, you know, everything. You don't have power steering. So you feel everything to the steering wheel. It's heavy. Uh, a guy with skinny arms like me sometimes struggles to hang on to it for a long run. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very cool. And Jake? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've only, uh, like Sheldon, I've only done it in a test, but I mean, in, in terms of like the short run sort of, a, let's say a qualifying mode on, on all the powers, you know, it, it is still a race car from a sense, you know, it's got four wheels, a brake, a thrust on a steering wheel. So you drive to the limit of grip you, you have. Um, but definitely the, the, strength, the strange part about that is the braking system, I would say. Um, I mean, all teams have different versions of, of their own, but, you know, it's not the braking shape and the braking style is completely different. Like Sheldon says, it locks very easily. You can't apply anywhere near the amount of brake pressure I would be used to in something like Formula 3, for example, and definitely Sheldon's used to in DTM. But once you get your head around that, that you can't do it and, you know, you limit yourself to that, it's kind of, you know, not straightforward, but the, the difficult bit at that point becomes adjusting the power modes and doing it on that one lap. Um, not, you know, getting the limit out of it whilst not making a mistake. I mean, I feel like I'm kind of used to that with GP3 on Pirelli's. Um, you know, you get two or three laps tops in qualifying where you go out, out prep, push, and that's it. You know, then you box. So kind of get prepared for it from that. But I think I think the hard part about Formula E is definitely the race simulations. Um, you know, even just driving around the track by yourself, you know, following the beeps and the, the lift and post beeps that you get in the car, trying to maximise the lap time by saving the energy and, you know, doing all the various switch changes and radio chats or um, as you're going around and trying to do all that. And then you think, wow, so if, if you go into a race situation, you've got another 23 cars trying to trying to do all that as well. Whilst there's no error wash in the championships, so everyone's nose to tail. Um, the yellow flags, FCYs, people hitting the wall and the cars themselves are quite strong to a point. So they, you can bump and barge a little bit. It's, the mental spare mental capacity you must need um, to extract the most out of it is probably up there as the most, the highest in any championship, I would think. Yeah, it seems that way from, from an outside point of view. It just seems like a completely different way of going about a race weekend in general and about maximising that one lap thing because the power change, that's something you don't yeah. usually get that in any other yeah. formula to be able to turn up from, say, whatever, 200 watts to 250 watts of power just yeah. for a qualifying lap. Yes, you get your one lap of doing that, but actually arriving when you're going 15, 20 kph faster yeah. is usually not a normal thing. So it's readjusting. It, it is weird because you, you would think that, you you know, it just it's, it's weird to just change the dial and all of a sudden you've got 20% more power, 25% <laughs> more power. And you just get a kick in the head and you're like, well, I've only changed the steering wheel. Like, where yeah. are you earlier? <laughs> sort of thing. Um, but I think you'd think it would be easy, wouldn't you? Just change your braking point a little bit. But, you know, such is the moment in qualifying, I think, that 
you can see with some rookies in Deria that, you know, they're very quick on 200 kilowatts in practice. And then they move up to that one lap on 250 and the breaking points have changed, but they're trying to still, you know, there's that inner thing in your mind still saying, oh, you can break a bit later or you can stay on that break point, but you'll mess it up. Um, and it's just, I think that's where the experience comes in definitely or where the experience helps with some guys. But, you know, I think you have to be quite pragmatic in Formula E, I think. 